John Paul Jones was born simply as John Paul on the estate of Arbickland near Kirkbean in the stewardy of Kirkwood Bright on the southwest coast of Scotland. John Paul started his maritime career at the age of 13, sailing out of Whitehaven in the northern English county of Cumberland as an apprentice aboard Friendship under Captain Benson. For several years, John sailed aboard a number of British merchant and slave ships, including King George in 1764 as third mate and the ship Two Friends as first mate in 1766. In 1768, he abandoned his prestigious position on the profitable Two Friends while docked in Jamaica. He found his own passage back to Scotland and eventually obtained another position. John's career was quickly and unexpectedly advanced during his next voyage aboard the Brig John, which sailed from port in 1768, when both the captain and the ranking mate suddenly died of yellow fever. John managed to navigate the ship back to a safe port and, in reward for his impressive feat, the vessel's grateful Scottish owner made him master of the ship and its crew, giving him 10% of the cargo. He then led two voyages to the West Indies before running into difficulty. During his second voyage in 1770, John Paul viciously flogged one of his sailors, leading to accusations that his discipline was unnecessarily cruel. These claims initially were dismissed, but his favorable reputation was destroyed when the sailor died a few weeks later. John was arrested for his involvement in the man's death and was imprisoned in Kirkwood Bright Tallbooth, but later released on bail. The negative effect of this episode on his reputation is indisputable, although the man's death has been linked to other causes. This man was not a usual sailor, but an adventurer from a very influential Scottish family. Leaving Scotland, John commanded a London registered vessel named Betsy, a West Indiaman mounting 22 guns, engaged in commercial speculation in Tobago for about 18 months. This came to an end, however, when John killed a mutineer crew member named Blackton with a sword in a dispute over wages. He was not willing to be tried in an admiral's court where the family of his first victim had been influential. He felt compelled to flee to Fredericksburg province of Virginia, leaving his fortune behind. He went to Fredericksburg to arrange the affairs of his brother, who had died there without leaving any relatives, and about this time he assumed the surname of Jones, in addition to his original surname, making him John Paul Jones. It was not long afterwards that John Paul Jones joined the Continental Navy to fight against Britain. Jones left for Philadelphia shortly after settling in Northern America to volunteer his services around 1775 to the newly founded Continental Navy, the precursor to the United States Navy. During this time, the Navy and the Marines were being formally established, and suitable ships, officers, and captains were in great demand. John's potential would likely have gone unrecognized were it not for the endorsement of Richard Henry Lee, who knew of his abilities. With help from influential members of the Continental Congress, John was appointed as a first lieutenant of the newly converted 24-gun frigate USS Alfred in the Continental Navy on December 7, 1775. John sailed from the Delaware River in February 1776 aboard the USS Alfred on the Continental Navy's maiden cruise. It was aboard this vessel that John took the honor of hoisting the first U.S. ensign over a naval vessel. He actually raised the Grand Union flag. The fleet had been expected to cruise along the coast but was ordered instead by Commodore Essex Hopkins to sail for the Bahamas where Nassau where Nassau was raided for its military supplies. The fleet had an unsuccessful encounter with a British packet ship on their return voyage. John was then assigned command of the sloop USS Providence. Congress had recently ordered the construction of 13 frigates for the Navy, one of which was to be commanded by John. In exchange for this prestigious command, John accepted his commission aboard the smaller USS Providence. During this six weeks voyage, John captured 16 prizes and inflicted significant damage along the coast of Nova Scotia. John's next command came as a result of Commodore Hopkins' order to liberate hundreds of American prisoners forced to labor in coal mines in Nova Scotia and also to raid British shipping. On November 1st, 1776, John set sail in command of USS Alfred to carry out this mission. Winter conditions prevented freeing the prisoners, but the mission did result in the capture of Mellish, a vessel carrying a vital supply of winter clothing intended for troops in Canada. Despite his success at sea, John's disagreements with those in authority reached a new level upon arriving in Boston 
on December 16, 1776. While at the port, he began feuding with Commodore Hopkins as John believed that Hopkins was hindering his advancement and talking down his campaign plans. As a result of this and other frustrations, John was assigned the smaller command of a newly constructed USS Ranger on June 14, 1777. After making the necessary preparations, Jean sailed for France on November 1, 1777, with orders to assist the American cause however possible. The American commissioners in France were Benjamin Franklin, Silas Dean, and Arthur Lee, and they listened to John's strategic recommendations. They promised him the command of Indian, a new vessel being constructed for America in Amsterdam. Britain, however, was able to divert Le Indian away from American hands by exerting pressure to ensure its sail to France instead. Jones was again left without a command. It's thought that during this time, John developed a close friendship with Benjamin Franklin, whom he greatly admired. In 1778, he was accepted into the Masonic Lodge together with Benjamin Franklin. On February 6, 1778, France signed the Treaty of Alliance with America, formally recognizing the independence of the new American Republic. Eight days later, Captain Jones's USS Ranger became the first American naval vessel to be formally saluted by the French. John wrote of the event, I accepted his offer all the more for after all it was a recognition of our independence and in the nation. John had some early successes against British merchant shipping in the Irish Sea. Then he persuaded his crew on April 17, 1778 to participate in an assault on Whitehaven, the town where his maritime career had begun. As it happened, contrary winds forced them to abandon the attempt and drove USS Ranger towards Ireland, causing more trouble for British shipping on the way. On April 20th, 1778, John learned from captured sailors that the Royal Navy sloop John learned from captured sailors that the Royal Navy sloop of war HMS Drake was anchored off Carrickfergus Island. For the attack took place just after midnight, but the mate responsible for dropping the anchor to halt USS Ranger right alongside HMS Drake misjudged the timing in the dark. So John had to cut his anchor and run. The wind shifted and Ranger recrossed the Irish Sea to make another attempt at raiding Whitehaven. John led the assault with two boats of 15 men just after midnight on April 23, 1778, hoping to set fire to and sink all Whitehaven ships anchored in the harbor, which numbered between 200 and 400 wooden vessels and consisted of a full merchant fleet and many coal transporters. As it happened, the journey to shore was slowed by the still shifting wind as well as a strong ebb tide. They successfully spiked the town's big defensive guns to prevent them from being fired, but lighting fires proved difficult as the lanterns in both boats had run out of fuel. To remedy this, some of the party were sent to raid a public house on the quarry side, but the temptation to stop for a quick drink led to a further delay. Dawn was breaking by the time they returned and began the arson attacks, so efforts were concentrated on the coal ship Thompson in the hope that the flames would spread to adjacent ships, all grounded by the low tide. A fire alert was sounded and large numbers of people came running to the quay, forcing the Americans to retreat and extinguishing the flames with the town's two fire engines. However, their hopes were dashed of sinking John's boat with cannon fire because of the prudent spiking. John next crossed the Solway Firth from Whitehaven to Scotland, hoping to hold for ransom the Earl of Selkirk, who lived at St. Mary's Isle near Kirkadabright. The Earl, John reasoned, could be exchanged for American sailors impressed into the Royal Navy. The Earl was discovered to be absent from his estate. The attacks on St. Mary Isle and Whitehaven resulted in no prizes or profits, although their effect was significant on British morale, it is clear that the crew felt alienated by their commander. John believed his intentions were honorable, and his actions were strategically essential to the American Revolution. Ranger's capture of HMS Drake was one of the Continental Navy's few significant military victories during the Revolution, and was of immense symbolic importance, demonstrating as it did that the Royal Navy was far from invincible. By overcoming such odds, USS Ranger's victory became an important symbol of the American spirit and served as an inspiration for the permanent establishment of the United States Navy after the Revolution. In 1779, Captain Jones took command of the 42-gun USS Bonheim Richard, a merchant ship rebuilt and given to America by the French shipping Maginet. On August 14th, as a vast French and Spanish invasion fleet approached England, he provided a diversion by heading for Ireland at the head of a five-ship squadron, including the 36-gun USS Alliance, 32-gun USS Palace, 
12 gun USS Vengeance and Le Cerf, also accompanied by two privateers, HMS Monsieur and Granville. Several Royal Navy warships were sent towards Ireland in pursuit of Captain Jones. But on this occasion, he continued right around the north of Scotland into the North Sea, creating near panic all along Britain's east coast. On September 23, 1779, the squadron met a large merchant convoy off the coast of Flamborough Head, East Yorkshire. The 50-gun British frigate HMS Serapis and the 22-gun hired ship Countess of Scarborough placed themselves between the convoy and Captain Jones' squadron, allowing the merchants to escape. Shortly after 7 p.m., the Battle of Flamborough Head began. Serapis engaged USS Bonheim Richard, and soon afterwards, USS Alliance fired from a considerable distance at Countess. Quickly recognizing that he could not win the Battle of Big Guns, John made every attempt to lock Richard and HMS Serapis together, finally succeeding after about an hour, following which his deck guns and his marine marksmen in the rigging began clearing the British decks. USS Alliance sailed past and fired a broadside doing at least as much damage to Richard as to Serapis. With Bonham Richard burning and sinking, an attempt by the British to board Bonham Richard was thwarted. Captain Pearson of HMS Serapis accepted that prolonging the battle could achieve nothing, so he surrendered. Most of Bonheim Richard's crew immediately transferred to other vessels, and Jones took command of Serapis for a trip to neutral Holland. In the following year, the King of France, Louis XVI, honored him with the title Chevalier. John Paul Jones accepted the honor and desired the title to be used thereafter. In June 1782, John Paul Jones was appointed to command of the 74-gun USS America, but his command fell through when Congress decided to give the USS America to the French. As a result, he was given assignment in Europe. In 1783, at length, this too expired and Jones was left without prospects for active employment, leading him on April 23, 1787 to enter into the service of Empress Catherine II of Russia who placed great confidence in Jones as a rear admiral aboard the 24-gun flagship Vladimir. He took part in the naval campaign in Dunaberg Lemur against the Turks. John and Nassau Segan repulsed the Ottoman forces. In 1789, John Paul Jones arrived in Warsaw, Poland, where he befriended another veteran of the American Revolutionary War, who advised him to leave the service of aristocratic Russia and serve another power, suggesting Sweden. In May 1790, John arrived in Paris where he remained in retirement, although he made a number of attempts to re-enter the service of the Russian Navy. He was found dead lying face down on his bed in his third floor Paris apartment on July 18, 1792. A small procession of servants, friends, and loyal family walked his body the four miles to burial. He was buried in Paris at the St. Louis Cemetery. In 1905, John Paul Jones' remains were identified by U.S. Ambassador to France, General Horace Porter. Jones's body was ceremonially removed from interment in a Paris and Charnel house and brought to the United States aboard the USS Brooklyn, escorted by three other cruisers. On April 24, 1906, John Paul Jones's coffin was installed in Bancroft Hall at the United States Naval Academy, Annapolis, Maryland, following a ceremony presided over by then-President Theodore Roosevelt, who gave a lengthy tributary speech.